initially I came from a uh, Christian family. Um, growing up, as I started to get into my teens, I started to actually sort of question faith. Uh, think, things started happening in, in my life, uh, the, the passing of my older brother, various different sort of things happened where I sort of thought, you know, if there's a God, he's uh, pretty cruel. And actually, you know, I, I started to question it. But I think where at one point I got to the stage where I thought, there definitely can't be a God, um, simply because of the amount of cruelty that happens in the world, the whole sort of idea of you know, salvation and, and people being saved. So well, why couldn't God just save people anyway? And, uh, I, I actually got to the point where I said, actually, you know, there is no, no such thing as God. And, and I decided, I'll, you know, I, I became an atheist. About a, uh, about a year and a half ago, um, I decided to actually sort of investigate faith once and for all. I thought, you know, uh, let me finally put the nail in the coffin that uh, there really is no such thing as God. And the main sort of reasons why I actually thought Christianity in particular couldn't really stand up was I thought, well, the Bible is uh, over 2,000 years old. There's, there's no way that this book can be correct. I also thought, well, you know, there's, there's a placebo effect to religion. A placebo is, uh, in medical terms, doctors use that to try out medication. So, for example, if they test out a pill, they'll take 10 people, give five people the actual drug, and five people an empty pill. And often you find that people actually experience the same symptoms despite the fact they're not even on the pill. And this is uh, the same sort of effect which I thought would be the case with, uh, with religion. So I thought, well, first of all, to actually sort of test out this placebo effect, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to actually sort of go to a church and me knowing that it's a placebo, I couldn't possibly feel anything because I know that this isn't actually real. So I went to a church, I went up and uh, sat in, in, uh, in, 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 in the actual audience and what, what I found was whilst I thought, okay, well this, they, you know, people at the church seemed to be sort of very sort of happy, everyone seemed to be uh, they sort of caught up in, in, in the Holy Spirit and all these sort of things and thought, well, this placebo is, uh, they, they sort of, they, they, they certainly believe it. And by the end of the service, I was sort of thinking, well, you know, although I don't believe this stuff, I had to admit that I felt something I, I shouldn't have felt, considering that I know it's a placebo and that actually, you know, this can't possibly be real. So at that stage, I left it at that and thought, okay, well, I'll, I'll investigate the actual Bible. Let me have a look and see, you know, if this Bible could possibly be correct. The, if the Bible can stand up to archaeological evidence and, and actually sort of, you know, the, if the people are, are in the Bible match what historical documents say, and, and if there's sort of no inconsistencies on that basis, then that's a very good reason to sort of have a look at it and say, well, okay, you know, that, that what, you know, they, that the Bible, maybe there is an element to, of it to be correct. And the second part of that as well was to sort of say, well, who, who actually wrote the Bible? When was it written? How can we be sure that what's written today it is exactly what was written 2,000 years ago. Archaeological side of things, what I first sort of looked at was um, looking at people, places, and I was quite amazed to see that uh, not only did it actually match the Bible, but uh, it was also interesting to see that in many cases where past historians had criticised the Bible and said, well, you know, you've got this king that uh, he, he, he couldn't possibly exist, you've got four kings as opposed to the Bible saying four, historically we know there's three. And then sort of years later, they actually find evidence uh, to, to actually back up the fact that uh, this king does exist with the name exactly as was stated in the Bible. And countless times over and over again, you see different scenarios of this happening. So I thought, okay, well, it, archaeologically, this Bible does sort of seem to stand up a lot more than what you'd think at first glance. And then I sort of, sort of had a look to see, well, how can we know the Bible is definitely what was written? Because we don't have the original manuscripts for the Bible. So to sort of look at this, uh, one of the things that impressed me most was, of course, the, the fact that the countless number of manuscripts we now actually have. Um, there, there is more manuscripts for the Bible than probably any other book. And uh, so to actually back it up from that sense, you know, that, that in itself is quite impressive. Uh, we know what the early church fathers' letters were, and we can actually compile the entire New Testament just from the actual letters. And when you see that, you realize you don't even need the manuscripts to actually back up the Bible. And so at this point, after sort of a few months of looking at this, I thought, well, I'll go back to, to, to the church and just sort of see what this is, because, of course, if this is true, then, of course, uh, you know, I, if, I, if there really is a God and, and, of course, the Bible is true, then, then really I should, uh, should actually believe in this. So I went to, to church, and at that point, that was when I actually gave my life to the Lord. And uh, from that day, things uh, made, there were a lot of changes in my life. I, I found that um, 
in particular being able to the fact that God can forgive me for all of my sins and uh, that uh, being his, his forgiveness also teaches you how to forgive and because of that I was able to let go of a lot of things in my life and uh, my life has changed a lot from the better too and I think also knowing that you can trust in God and, and knowing who God is and who you are in Christ also is a is a big thing too because of course then instead of doing things all on your own merit now of course you know you know that uh, you, you're doing things uh, that, that God is basically doing things in your life and uh, you, you've got someone to trust and, and that makes a huge difference John 8 verse 32 and you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free